What's up, guys? Welcome back to Crypto Weekly Review, home of the Wolfpack, your number one source for crypto tainment to get you through the bear market. In this episode, we're going to talk about the dollar crisis that is looming overhead, the Bitcoin pump. How high will it go? Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump straight into the charts. You be all sus. Yeah, I just doubled up on crypto. I just doubled down on the new vest. Now my chair looking like two checks. Type of money made me want a two step. Who next? This week, I be on the moon next. Stop going up like two X. That's a fast flip like suplex. Two really stepping like a duplex. You bet. Never lose change, but I do flex. Bitcoin on the daily chart is having a nice rally. Yes, a beautiful party. But there are some signs in the charts that suggest things can still go terribly wrong. Here is your trade setup, guys. We finally took out the previous high and got confirmation candles on the 21 exponential moving average. Hooray! Technically, your entry is right around here, right around 21,300, and your take profit is right around here at 23,100. The bulls have finally shown up. La niña está triste. Que tiene la niña. Look guys, not so fast. We do have some bearish indicators. I am not convinced on this. It is not confluent, okay? Now look, we did come above the 21 exponential moving average. We busted through the resistance. That is very beautiful. However, we do have the shooting star candle and it's inside our bear flag and it confirmed our bear flag trend line, right? So this bear flag is very valid and now we are outside of it after a shooting star rejecting it, okay? Oh, no. Yes, we grabbed the 21 exponential moving average, but it is diving after a shooting star rejecting the trend line. And if we go over here, the weekly chart is a little bit ugly. We are rejecting the S2 pivot. And on the monthly chart, we are rejecting the S2 pivot. Now, I'm not saying that it won't pump, from here and make bears really mad at themselves. I'm saying that the probabilities of this trade setup aren't great. And I predict that even if we take out the primary pivot, we will reject the top of this bear flag. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I don't think it's going to get that high. I think things are still very bearish in a macro sense. Now, we are extremely, extremely oversold. We need some kind of a relief pump. We don't have a whole lot of bad news for a week or two. We could get a relief rally for a week or two. Just if you do take this setup, if you do take this setup, make sure you take profits and have a stop loss because the bears could definitely come back at any moment. That's so I will start turning a little bit more bullish on Bitcoin if we can get above and confirm above these pivots right here on the weekly and monthly chart, you know, right above 22,000, you get a little pump and a confirmation on there. I think that is the better trade setup. The DXY is pumping. This is the dollar index, which is good, right? Well, it is good for Americans, but the rest of the world is having a little bit of trouble servicing their debt because on top of a strong dollar, we are also seeing high interest rates. Well, these economies are being devalued in their own currency, having to pay back higher interest rate loans in a more expensive currency could collapse the global economies, especially in emerging markets, i.e. look at what is happening in Sri Lanka. There is utter chaos in Sri Lanka. There's food shortages. There is no fuel, electricity. People have taken to the streets to protest. They have been violently attacking some of the politicians, burning their homes down, and they even stormed the presidential palace, took a nice swim in the presidential pool, and of course, had a sleepover in the presidential bedroom. Come on, Bryce. 
There are a lot more important problems in Sri Lanka to worry about. Like what? So are we headed for a dollar crisis and more global unrest as the global debt levels hit a record of $3.3 trillion? If you do have a business in an emerging economy, let's say you are earning in pesos, but you have to pay your loans back in dollars, you may not be able to service your debt anymore, especially with interest rates going up. So then you have to lay off or fire or shut down, causing a contagion in this new global economy. And when we look at where we are economically, and we are in a strong, uh, we are stronger economically than we have been uh, in history. <laughs> I just can't get bullish in this environment. I think that Bitcoin is going to be the place to be when these markets come rushing back and they will. The low liquidity and the high volatility of Bitcoin will be the best place for the most gains. However, I don't think we are out of the fog yet. I think things are going to get worse before they get better. I see the whole world just teetering on a knife's edge and there is a dozens of ways that this whole thing can come crashing down like a house of cards. I solely blame this on our government between the unnecessary lockdowns, the excessive money printing, the pointless war in Ukraine that rages on and on, their globalist expansionist climate agenda that even has farms being shut down in the Netherlands for nitrogen emissions in the middle of a food crisis. I am glad that the Dutch farmers are protesting and fighting back. Is this conversation about overthrowing the government? No, no government. government. Fuck off, government. <laughs> okay. But hey, who needs farms when you can just eat bugs? That is the eco-friendly form of protein. Look, I just don't want to go long in this environment because I think I'm going to be trading these screens for these screens. I'm just sad. Is the liquidity crunch in crypto finally over as major exchanges and crypto funds became insolvent from over leveraging and unrealistic yields? Now, could that happen in the global economy? I think the probabilities are high, but is it over for crypto? Well, Sam Bankman Fried, the guy who bailed out all of these funds and exchanges, seems to think so. He mentioned it recently in one of his Adderall fueled interviews. I don't see any particular reasons that we couldn't be at the bottom. And I'm not trying to say that we definitely are at the bottom. But like, I think the unwinding that had to happen has happened. And I think that like, if you saw a bit of a reversal in like risk asset pricing in general right now, I think crypto just go along with that. You know, we're sort of in a like, well, let's see what happens with the world type situation. But I think he's absolutely right about this. Our shoe has dropped. Our liquidity crunch has happened. Our restructuring has happened. A lot of people lost money. Now we are just looking at the macro environment as Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are highly correlated with the stock market right now. Ever since the banksters got in, it's moving with the markets. And when will it finally decouple? That will be right around the having like usual. So that's why we always talk macro on this channel. We're talking about the Netherlands. We're talking about the dollar crisis. That's why we keep checking the price over and over and watching the global situation so we know a good time to get in so we don't get slapped upside the head with more red candles. <laughs> Elon Musk, the Doge father, holds a lot of Bitcoin. He also holds a lot of children. He has nine kids with multiple baby mamas. He just reportedly had twins with one of his top executives from his company, Neuralink. Well, it turns out he has pulled out of the Twitter deal, which makes it the first time Elon has ever pulled out. <laughs> Obviously moved straight into the house with the children and it became a very real thing immediately. Although there's been so many times that, right, I'm getting on a plane to England and I'm never gonna see you again. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, no, not really. 
Twitter fell 6% on the news into the close. It probably has some more further downside to go. Now, Twitter said they're going to sue Elon Musk for that $44 billion, but he said they did not disclose enough information for him to acquire the company, including spam and bot accounts is what he was worried about. Now, everyone is saying Twitter banned Elon Musk, but he is still here on Twitter. It would be funny, though, because then I guess we'd all have to subscribe to Chinese Elon Musk. Hi, everyone. I'm Elon Musk. Uh, what? Mark Cuban rugged once again. Mark Cuban is a successful entrepreneur. He is a star on the show Shark Tank. He also owns the Dallas Mavericks. Well, the Dallas Mavericks and Voyager Digital came up with a partnership where Mavericks fans can have a free $100 in trading credit on the platform if they deposit $100 and trade at least 10. Well, nine months later, Voyager Digital files for bankruptcy. Nine months ago, Mark Cuban said this is a great opportunity for Mavericks fans, but now Mavericks fans are just looking for an opportunity to get their money back. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're gonna see a cent of it. Crypto is a key that is so complicated for 99% of the population. Do you put it in a device? Do you print it out? How do you keep from being hacked? Who's going to host it for you? Hopefully it's not Voyager Digital. Because <laughs> you might not ever see your money ever again. And you got to do your own research and hold your own keys in this space. You can't just follow big names. That's just like blindfolding yourself and going for a run. Hex on the daily chart isn't looking very good. We bounce and it's below the 21 exponential moving average. I actually have an artist depiction of what the people you onboarded had to go through. Yes, explosive price action to the downside. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what the hell is this shit? <laughs> Have you just stopped and looked at this chart? Dear God. My God. Yeah, this shit is going lower, bro. I mean, it's not even pumping as hard as Bitcoin. It's like that. It's not even keeping up as far as its averages. And look how far this thing is averaging. Like, okay, so we touched the 21 exponential moving average, confirming the daily downtrend right now. Um, I, I, I could see it popping up above this if Bitcoin keeps going. You know what I mean? But man, dude, there's just, there's just no hope in sight, man. It's just... Dude, this this is this is wrecked, bro. This shit this shit's wrecked. What's up, haters? Richard Hart here, showing you what I got that you don't. These here are the new Virgil Abloh Louis Vuitton Nike Air Force Ones. I have them and you don't. Don't you wish you were more like me? And the reason you don't have them is because you invested in Hex. <laughs> that the answers you just referred to being paid, uh, but the token doesn't generate revenue. So the only place money can come from is other investors. That would be a Ponzi sure. scheme, no matter how much you Hex is a Ponzi and Bitcoin isn't because Hex produces yield, okay? It produces yield, but it has no revenue. Well, Bitcoin doesn't have a revenue either, but it doesn't promise appreciation. You buy it hoping it'll appreciate, but it's not designed to uh, appreciate okay it's just a limited supply and it's priced is determined by demand which is the same thing as hex but it's producing yield without revenue and the intermediary the middleman is the contract itself that's the only loophole look i like ponzi's okay <laughs> and it could pump but dude there's 38 percent yield on this thing like look at voyager and all these guys six to eleven percent yield they went bust okay well people are making a lot of yield in the price is going sideways for him now and then it got it's just gonna there's just gonna be so much sell pressure if this market doesn't turn around soon and it doesn't look like pulse chain pulse x is coming out soon guys this, this shit is going low bro this shit is is going super low but anyways guys thank you for watching like and subscribe join the wolf pack and i'll see you on the next one peace